After a short but illustrious film career, Grace Kelly gave it all up to become the princess consort of Monaco. But as we're about to find out, before she was a royal, she craved a different kind of buzz. Welcome to Do You Remember? I'm Nostalgic Nick, and today we are looking at Grace Kelly and her lovers. She first met Prince Rainier III at the 1955 Cannes Film Festival, sparking a year-long courtship. But before the royal wedding, she had a string of affairs with co-stars and married men, longer than the Monaco coastline. We will discuss one particular incident when she was caught in the act while two-timing one of her famous lovers. Before we get to the details, please hit that thumbs up icon to show support and subscribe to our channel so you'll never miss a video. Now let's head back to Monaco and meet the many lovers of Princess Grace. Don Richardson. Grace Kelly moved to New York to study acting at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in 1948. She left her affluent family back in Philadelphia. Her parents only agreed because they hoped she would get that acting thing out of her system and grow up to marry some nice boy. At the academy, she began dating Don Richardson, one of her married instructors. Richardson told biographer Robert Lacey that, quote, she was rapacious about getting famous and being important. Richardson also claimed the first time she went to his apartment for coffee, he returned from the kitchen and found her waiting for him in the nude. Prince Ali Khan While she was seeing Richardson, Grace Kelly turned down a marriage proposal from the Shah of Iran and briefly dated Prince Ali Khan. The millionaire playboy was known for giving emerald cigarette cases to the women he dated and emerald bracelets to the women he slept with. So, in case you were wondering, Grace Kelly received a bracelet. But things didn't work out and Khan was forced to settle for Rita Hayworth. Not so much of a settle at all. Gary Cooper If you won't go with me now, I'll be on that train when it leaves here. Grace Kelly got her breakout role while playing Gary Cooper's wife in the western High Noon. Marshal Will Kane is preparing to retire and ride into the sunset with his young bride, but he learns that an outlaw he put away is now out of prison and headed to town with revenge on his mind. The townspeople get yellow and leave Marshal Kane hanging when he looks for deputies. And so, our hero is forced to face the notorious Miller gang alone. High Noon earned four Oscars, and Presidents Eisenhower, Reagan, and Clinton said it was their all-time favorite film. On the other hand, John Wayne said it was, quote, the most un-American thing I'd ever seen in my whole life. So, he and Howard Hawks made Rio Bravo in response. Apparently, Kelly and Cooper's on-screen relationship continued even after director Fred Zinnemann called cut. Clark Gable Grace Kelly traveled to Kenya in 1953 to shoot Mogambo with Ava Gardner and Clark Gable. She told Hollywood writer Hedda Hopper, quote, Mogambo had three things that interested me. John Ford, Clark Gable, and a trip to Africa with expenses paid. She also met Frank Sinatra on set and we'll be discussing that incident shortly. Kenya's subtropical climate set the stage for an affair with her co-star. Kelly remarked, quote, What else is there to do if you're alone in a tent in Africa with Clark Gable? Well, her mother grew concerned and traveled to the set to chaperone. How do you know? Maybe you spoke too soon. But that was no longer necessary when Clark Gable found her too clingy and ended the affair. He also switched hotels to avoid her and posted a guard outside of his suite. Oleg Cassini Oleg Cassini was a fan of Mogambo and sent red roses to Grace Kelly every day until she agreed to have lunch. She began dating the fashion designer, and he transformed her look from school teacher to something much more sexy. But her parents disapproved of the relationship because he had Russian roots, two previous divorces, and a reputation as a philanderer. She eventually relented and called off the engagement, 
But it was once rumored that she was pregnant with Cassini's child before they terminated the pregnancy. JFK Grace Kelly and John F. Kennedy briefly dated before their careers blossomed. But Joe Kennedy didn't want his son to jeopardize his political aspirations by dating an actress. Fast forward to 1954, and JFK was in the hospital recovering from back surgery. Jackie asked Grace to visit her husband, unaware of their prior relationship. Grace Kelly dressed as a nurse to surprise him and allegedly gave him some Lewinsky therapy to lift his spirits. Ray Milland While filming Dial M for Murder, Kelly began an affair with co-star Ray Milland that nearly destroyed his marriage and ended her career. Milland and his wife of 20 years separated, and tabloid writers called Grace a homewrecker. Hedda Hopper referred to her as a nymphomaniac, and Milland's wife Mal even called gossip columnist Luella Parsons in the middle of the night to tell her about this young girl who's trying to steal my husband. Milland reconciled with his wife after realizing how expensive a divorce could be, but the couple did stay together until Ray died in 1986. Bing Crosby In 1954, Grace Kelly appeared in The Bridges at Toko Rye with William Holden, and he reportedly almost left his wife for her. They also appeared together in The Country Girl, and the film's on-screen love triangle reflected real-life events. Bing Crosby plays a washed-up alcoholic singer, and Grace plays his long-suffering wife. Holden plays a stage director who takes a chance on him. Then Kelly's character Georgie becomes torn between the two. Well, in the real world, she still had her feelings for Holden when she set her sights on marriage with Crosby. But she had a rival. Bing was already dating actress Catherine Grant, and their affair continued even after Crosby popped the question. Kelly was also the reason their 1955 wedding was postponed. But Bing apologized to Catherine a year later, and they did marry in 1957. Marlon Brando. All I want is my own name and a modest job to buy sugar for my coffee. Grace Kelly won the Academy Award for The Country Girl in 1955. Bing Crosby was also nominated, but the Best Actor honors went to Marlon Brando for On the Waterfront. Certainly a well-deserved award, one of my favorite films. But that wasn't the only thing Bing Crosby lost that night. Crosby showed up at Kelly's hotel room in the wee hours and found her in bed with Marlon Brando. And boy, he could have been a contender. Cary Grant After her relationship with Bing Crosby ended, Kelly had a brief rebound with Tony Curtis before getting involved with Cary Grant. Have you ever had a better offer in your whole life? This time her co-star from To Catch a Thief. Their brief onset romance developed into a friendship that continued after her marriage. Prince Albert recalled Carrie's visits to the palace when he was a small child and said he'd tell dirty jokes to him, explaining that he told dirtier ones with dad. Cary Grant didn't settle down with Grace, but she was his favorite co-star. In an interview, he called her, quote, the most extraordinary actress ever and said, with all due respect to Ingrid Bergman, I much preferred Grace. She had serenity. Frank Sinatra. And what have you become? A jukebox hero. Grace's final film appearance was in High Society with Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra. She didn't pick things back up with Bing, but she did begin an affair with old Blue Eyes that allegedly continued after her marriage. Frank Sinatra brought Ava Gardner to the set of Mogambo on their honeymoon, actually, and they stayed in the same tent as the cast and crew. Sinatra and Gardner had very loud arguments each night and even louder makeup, you know. At first, they did not make a good impression on Kelly, but things were quite different on the set of High Society and Grace and Frank remained great friends for the rest of their lives. A Royal Wedding Aristotle Onassis attempted to fix Prince Rainier up with Marilyn Monroe, but the highly eligible prince didn't consider her marriage material. 
But Grace Kelly was a different story, and she caught the prince's eye while promoting to catch a thief. Before announcing the engagement, the prince needed to be sure that Grace could bear him an heir. She privately underwent fertility testing and hid it from her family. The naive prince believed his bride-to-be was a virgin, and she told doctors she broke her hymen playing field hockey in high school. Grace Kelly retired from acting and had three kids with Prince Rainier, but her legendary libido raged on. She reportedly had an on-again, off-again affair with Paul Newman, and she was frequently seen enjoying Australian director Robert Dornhelm's company while traveling alone to Paris. There were also rumors she snuck away for some alone time with British actor David Niven, who frequently visited the palace in Monaco with his wife. Tragedy Strikes on September 13, 1982, Grace Kelly was driving on a mountainside road with her teenage daughter, Stephanie, when she lost control of the vehicle after having a stroke. The 1971 Rover P6 fell a distance of 120 feet, and the women were rushed to the hospital. Stephanie suffered a concussion, while Grace died the following night after Prince Rainier decided to turn off the life support. Over 400 people attended the funeral, and Jimmy Stewart delivered her eulogy. Stewart said, quote, Grace brought into my life a soft, warm light every time I saw her, and every time I saw her was a holiday of its own. Prince Rainier never remarried, and he was buried next to her after his death in 2005. Rear Window Assistant Director Herbert Coleman said, quote, Every man who was ever lucky enough to work with Grace Kelly fell in love with her, and it was clear Grace had a lot of love to give. So, we hope you enjoyed our look at the life and many loves of the illustrious Grace Kelly. So now we want to hear from you. Do you think she deserved to be a princess? Or did she hoodwink Prince Rainier? Were you disappointed when she gave up acting? Or was the film industry better without her? Finally, what was Grace Kelly's greatest film? Get in the comments and tell me all. And before you fly out of here, please give this video a thumbs up, it really helps. And subscribe to our channel for more content like this. But from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.